okay so good evening everyone this is ankit prajapati and i am calling this webinar for all of the candidate who wants to learn selenium right who want to know how to jump into the selenium how to start learning the selenium right so we already done bit introductory part before this recording so now i am just focusing on the core component okay so the slt learning is all about to creating the tutorial and provide the training to the people so myself ankit prajapati i have the 10 plus year of experience in the automation training right so i train the people for 6 uh, years now so today we are going to cover few more things about the selenium so based on the my registration right i got the good response across all over the world right so let me just show you what are the states so i get the lots of uh, inquiry from the india i got the lots of inquiry from the usa uk pakistan as well right and few of the other state i got the one or two or something like that right so this is all about uh, we have to do with the things right so now let's we cover the agenda what what should be the agenda of today's right so the agenda of today should be this one so we are going to do we are going to introduce like we are going to learn about the git the basic of git right then we are going to use about the selenium ide what is selenium web driver what is selenium grid then we will see the two framework the data is driven framework and the keyword driven framework then i will share you some knowledge about the test ng the maven cucumber then we will also do the api and the database testing right so i am going to cover all those topics not i will say in that much of i will try to make sure you get the enough knowledge right but in this one and half hour it may be possible i cannot cover in that much depth but i will sure i will make sure one after this session you will ha have the all the like the 50% information about these topics okay so let's we start from the git first right so many of you think like why why we need to learn git we are we are the automation tester and we are happy with the learning the selenium test ng cucumber and the framework and all those things right but the key thing is that whenever whenever you work on the whenever you work on the whenever you uh, work on the any of the uh, company right as automation tester right you need to create a script you need to write the java code you need to write the python code or in the c sharp so when you write the code right at the end of the day you need to submit your code to your manager and nowadays the git is most commonly used source control management tool right so when i say source control management that means you you are going to track each and every version of your source file or the code file which you are going to prepare for the company right so for that reason we use the git and that's the reason if you apply for the automation engineer right they will definitely ask you okay have you have you had the experience in the git so you should, you should you should always say yes and today i will show you the basic command and basic things about the git as well right so git is a open source distributed uh, source control systems right which is free to use so what you need to do what you need to do after the training right uh, you can do one thing let me just show you how you can create the account in git right so what you can do just hold on right so I, you can just go to google and just says git account right and you can just write this github right so git is the locally source control uh, systems and the github which provide the hosting space for git right so whatever the, your data is going to be host then you need to host on the github right so over here you need to create your account if you already have account you just go and click on sign in right so i already have the account right i already have the account so i'm just going to click over here and i'm just going to add my username and password right so the my password should be just hold on let me just check my password for git should be yes <laughs> and you can log in to your git account once you register right now you see you have the different structure over here you can see the normal screen of the git so you can create your own repository right the repository that means it is something that you need to do one thing you need to just create a new repository means new folder for your online github account so you can just click on the new right 
and you can create your repository so let me just create the demo demo repository as of now and you see it says yeah it is available right so this is over there right so now i can make it public or private or something like that and once i will click on the create repository right you will see the few basic commands which is already available over here so you can integrate with your local one and something like that your local repository so this is the centralized repository now let me do one thing let me just show you how you can how you can do with the sorry how you can do with your local one right so over here i'm just going to open one folder i'm just going to create one folder over here and i just in the download i will just create or on the desktop i will just create one folder each hub each hub trap right so this is my local one right so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy this path right i'm just going to copy this path and i'm just open my command prompt and i will go to this part so how i can go to cd right so i am now in the github so what i can do now i need to add some few commands which i can be he helpful for me to access on the git so first of the command it should be git init right so it will initiate the git on this particular folder right so let me just show you as of now you see this folder is blank right this folder is blank but as soon as we put this one this command git dot init and i will hit enter it says initial the em empty git repository right so git empty repository is initiated over here right so if you go to this command now you see there is one file over here now let's suppose if i just says under the command from right if i just says uh, git status to check if there is any file or not so it says no file over there right so what i will do i will just create one simple notepad file what i will do i will just go to this account right and i will create one notepad file quickly this can be a java code as well guys right but i am over here i'm just creating one file test dot text file now let me apply the same command right over here so i just says git status right so it says yeah there is one untracked file right so that means this is untracked file available to our local repository right so now what we need to do we need to add to our staging environment which is again the local side right once we add on the staging environment i will say so i will just say git add right and i will just give the name of the file right it says that if now i will say git status right it says okay now it is green so that is command is added over here right so now i can commit this particular repository to the staging environment so how i can do that i can do that git right i can do the git then i will say commit and i will just use this syntax right so in the interview they will ask you this syntax guys how you can commit how you can do the push how you can do the pull right so this is the basic command you can use right so I'll just message and i will just my first commit right and i will just say hit enter so now the one file which is one file is added to the this particular staging environment right now i need to i need to send this information to my remote repository which we have just created this one right so what i will do i will add this command you see we need to just copy this command totally and you just add it over here just paste it over here simple right once you paste it over here then what you need to do again just refer the command over here you just say push you need to push your details from local to remote so i'll just push and i'll just click on master right so you just say okay now it's asking for the username and password over here right so it says are you sure you want to connect i will just say yes right sorry it says type yes right okay just hold on okay yeah i'm going to connect this one right so now it is connected right now it is connected to that particular oh, permission but it says permission denied 
right but i will show you how to solve this issue but i will share you the solution on the youtube requ requirement so as of now this is all about the git right so let me share you some more command about the git this is the flow this is a simple flow you can start right but there is one more command like git init to initiate right to initiate then we have git add add files to local repository then we have git status right which is check if there are any untracked file then one more command these are the command guys you should remember and you should start practicing after this session just start practicing right so i'm going to commit first commit with the message m is uh, supposed to be a message for that one so i will just commit to local or oh, sorry commit to staging from local then i have git what we can do we can say remote add and the url of the remote repository which is already there when you create the, so this is you map your remote repo with your local now the one more important command git push right we git push remote origin origin means master the master branch it will be go to the master branch right so this will push your code to the remote repository and again we have git pull we can also do the pull we can also take from the from the remote to local right so it will pull the code from remote to local so these are the command you need to understand as of now right if you want to go in more detail you can definitely go and you can just search on the google right but these are the main command you should uh, uh, understand as of now okay now let's we go to the next topic which is now on the selenium side it's a selenium ide right so guys what is selenium ide the selenium ide is the it's the free so a free add-on i would say which is given by the selenium family which is the first uh, child of the selenium family why we need to learn selenium ide i will show you because it is very it is a base of the selenium right if you want to jump into the selenium web driver you should always use your hand at this 10 to 15 practicals using the selenium ide it will be help you to knowledge to increase your knowledge about how the thing is work right so let me just show you so i am again going to open this one the browser right and if you just go on google right and it just says selenium ide right chrome before it was only available for the firefox now it is available for the chrome as well and if you just click on the first link right it will ask you to add on your browser right so i have already added so that's the reason it not showing the option over here but if you click on add right it will allow you to add on the browser so you can see over here the selenium id icon will be there so if you click on that icon right it says record a new test open the existing project create a new project and clone the id right so guys before going to this one let me just show you one thing always remember always remember there are four fundamental right if you are jumping on the automation side right if you are going to jump into the automation side then always there are a four fundamental to learn those things i would say so first of all you can always say the fundamental to learn or apply i will say automation testing right always remember if you are working on a web based application or if you are working on the windows based application right you are working on the chrome you are working on any any application like qtp as well on the selenium as well these are the fundamental you need to always remember right this all come into the into the uh, one by one so first you need to prepare or set up the system 
details i would say system details right so if you are working on selenium right so you need to system you need to put the property system dot property you need to define the chrome driver information right so basic steps you need to define you need to first prepare you need to install some uh, tools and libraries and you need to configure always so first step for windows based or the web based right it is on the qtp as well it is on the selenium as well these are the steps will always remain common for the automation testing so first prepare or set up the system details then second launch the application right of if now it will be the windows based application or web based application but the second step will be the launch the application the third steps will be the third steps uh, will be i will say after the launching the application you should start locating the element it should be the windows or web based element right then the for perform the action actions on element right so you can do click you can do click or if it is text you can just say you can pass the text value you can select the drop down you check box the check box button and all those things right so perform the well perform the action right let me just say click send key right like this way so once you do these things right then another part will come fifth one it should be verification or assertion right because at the end of the day you are doing testing to verify the things so you can do the verification or assertion right and at the sixth point you do the reporting stuff so if you remember this six point guys right you can work on the automation on any tools on any applications first prepare and set up the systems second launch the application if it is a windows based right then it should be the it should be the i will say is, uh exe file right if it is a web based application then it should be the url then you should locate the element right so once you locate the element right what it will be happen once you locate the element right then it will be locate that particular element on the windows application or web application like a button like a text box like a check box like a hyperlink or link or anything then what you do you perform the action whatever the steps you require you perform the action right you perform the action and once you perform this action right you do the verifications what are the expected output you require and what is the actual output is there right after the test and then after that you do you prepare some report on that automation things and you submit to your manager so this is the complete automation process guys it will be on the windows it will be on it will apply on any tools any tools and technology okay so now let's we go to that browser right let me just open that browser and i will just click on this selenium i will just click on the record i will just take the google right i will just take the google.com i just take the google.com and i will just say record so you see now i install this one right i install this one and i just create i just follow my first step i install the system and i have the application i have the automation tool ready now i will give the project name i will just say google search right this is my project then base url you see guys now launch the application so i will click on the i just pass the url and i will just say start recording and once you say start recording system will record each and every movements of yours so you see over here it says selenium id is recording right if i just maximize this screen it will also record these steps right so let me just show you that that one as well okay now so just hold on let me just see okay over here you see now if i minimize these things right and i will maximize everything will be get record now i will click on this search button and i will just say srt learning right or i will just say srt learning dot block sport dot com right and i can see the blog over here i will click on that so it will open our blog and i will close this browser now right so you see over here i will just stop this recording and i'll just says srt learning search right 
so you see now i save my test over here and everything you see window size setting click button everything is good recorded over here every steps right so what you need to learn from over here you can just go to click on any steps just click on this command right so you can learn about the command different commands right what else command you can use or you can also create the new line right and you just go and just see there are too many commands over here just select any of them right and just learn about that things right if you go you just say go to reference over here right now let me just remove this one because we do not require this command over here now let me run this particular recording so i will click over here run the current test so now it is doing automatically you see guys it's open the google search right and it's done and it will click on the first link right so you see everything is says pass open click search and everything is passed right now if you click over here you see you can also see the target means this is a locator locate the element you see different locators x pass css and everything over here and the value what value we need to pass and over here you see you can see the reporting right you can see the reporting over here now you can do one thing one very useful for the selenium id you can use that feature you can always click on this and just says export export to javascript c sharp or ruby or any language right you can export to java and you can just click on export right it will be export over here i'm just exporting on downside it will create the java class you see guys and that java class you can directly use this java class you can directly use to your eclipse right if i just click on edit right you see it completely a new java class so let me just create one on my selenium sorry not on selenium just hold on selenium tactical i'm just going to create sample class and i will show you how this selenium ide right create how this selenium ide create the complete code for us right so if you just go over here and i'm just going to paste the code over here right so you see everything now the name is just different right so i will just change slt search right so i have the same code which is i downloaded from the selenium right so i have the same code over here you see everything every step is good recorded and this is what we write in the selenium web driver right if you are working on a selenium web driver we write these things manually right so this is all about the selenium ide this is a learning point right guys now let's go to the selenium web driver right why we use the selenium web driver so first things let me show you the architecture of the selenium web driver how the selenium web driver work right so just hold on let me sorry let me just resize these things right it is i think it is too big right so what i will do i will just click over here so let me just show you what is the architecture of the selenium web driver this is very useful you need to learn fundamental everything everything else is available on google but if you know from the scratch you can apply it easily right so the selenium web driver why we use the selenium web driver because there are many loopholes in the selenium ide so you can easily go on google and search what is the uh, why we use the selenium web driver over the selenium ide you will get many points over there like right? sometimes it, it is not uh, the selenium ide does not support the other browsers it does not support the alerts and pop up right so that's the reason we use the selenium ide okay yeah sure so now let me draw these things for you right how the selenium web driver work so the web driver is actually the real time example right let me give you the real time example if you are going anywhere using the ola or uber or any cab service right so what you do normally you sit behind the car right and you instruct the driver if he is not aware about what to do or where to go you instruct the driver okay go left go right and something like that you give the instruction to your driver and driver follow your instruction and get to your the destination point so the same thing will happen with the selenium web driver over here we are giving commands to our actual browser what to do 
because we are not going to touch the keyboard and mouse right so we are giving we are telling our browser what to do so for that we need to use some jar files the library files right and some drivers set up as well so let me tell you one thing yeah who said sure so let me just draw these things for you so what happened in the let's suppose these are the our browser right these are the our different browsers so i will just consider four of them as of now so i will just say this is my chrome browser this is my actual browser then i have the firefox then i have the internet explorer then i have the safari right so these are my actual browser right now what we have we have our computer we are coding over here this is our computer right we are coding over here so what we need to do we need to tell we need to write some code over here so it can be tell this actual browser what to do so for that what we will do we use the language right we use the different language language binding so i will say language bound binding so i will just say uh selenium language binding jar files right so you can just just java c sharp right then we have the ruby we have the python right then we can also use the php on anything right so we can use different language to write the selenium code right we can use the selenium libraries so right we can use the selenium library and we can write the code now what will happen once we write the code right it will send it will send this information to the over the internet to the our actual browser but there are few things will come across the world so all whatever we write in the term of the selenium code right it will go over here right it will go to this particular block and what is the, this particular block will represent it is convert this is the json protocol json sorry json protocol so now json protocol will convert the information in the readable format so that we can pass to the actual browser because browser cannot understand the programming stuff right so we need to have some medium we need to have some api calls so over here this is the one best example of api api means we have something common between two applications so we can perform some action so over here whatever the code we write right so we download the jar files for the selenium java or selenium c sharp we write the code using the few fundamental of the java right we pass that code to the json protocol and now json protocol will pass the code to the browser but still it json cannot directly interact with the browser for that he required someone he required a driver who drive the car right so what he will do he will pass the this information to drivers so over here there is one more layer come into the picture drivers right so if you see if you if you have bit knowledge about the selenium right we need to download chrome driver dot exe right we need to say for uh, firefox we need to have gecko driver dot exe then for internet explorer we have uh, something internet explorer dot exe right something like that for safari we also have safari driver dot exe right now why we require this driver because this driver can directly work with this actual driver right so these are the driver we required and this is we can say browser drivers this is the browser drivers who drive the browser who drive the browser right now the json will pass the information over here and this will go further to the actual browser so this is the complete architecture of selenium guys if somebody ask you okay what is the architecture of selenium you should explain like this way this will help you to get the good impression in the interview as well and all this operation right all this operation will happen over the internet right using the http protocol you all know the how the http request and response work right so no need to go in that much depth but this is work with the http request and response protocol format right so this is how the selenium web driver this is the selenium web driver architecture right now 
I will show you the few things like I, as, I, as I told you, right, we require the Java binding library, right? So from where we can download, then this browser driver, from where we can download, right? And I will also show you how to configure your first Selenium program. So over here, right, what I will do, I will just delete this one, which I do not require, right? I will just delete this one. Now you can go to the internet, you can just go to the Google and just say, two things you need to download, right? First things you need to download the jar files for the programming language, right? So download Selenium Java jar files, right? And you can see the Selenium official website over here, selenium.dev, just go to that official website, right, guys? And you can see over here, Selenium grid as well, everything. So language ruby java python right nowadays people use the java and python very much but i will say java has more opportunity and python is getting the uh, getting the uh, speed in the market as well right so these two languages are if you are a learner right these two languages is very useful for you to learn right so go for go for these two la uh, languages guys as of now because there is high demand in the market right so you can download for now i just download the java so click on this download and once you click on the download, it will download the GIF file. Right? Let me just close this presentation, right? So you can see the download. Just hold on. Okay. Let me just close this presentation. So you can see the download. You see over here it's downloading Selenium Java 3.14, right? Something like that. So this will come into your system. Now just go down. You will see the browser information, the browser driver. You see browsers. So I need to. I need the uh, Chrome browser, so just click on the documentation, right? So before downloading any Chrome browser, uh, Chrome or Firefox uh, driver, right? First verify your browser version. So just click on that, just go to help and about, and verify your Chrome version because you will get the error mismatch in the driver of your browser, right? Or driver is not compatible with your browser. So always first verify which which version of Chrome you have then download accordingly so over here it says yeah I, I can download the 81 because my version is 81 i can download the 81 and i just click on that and i will just click on the windows or mac or linux i will click the windows one and it will download this one you see the chrome driver 32 so i have these two files now right so what i will do i will just open the eclipse right i will just create the new project right i will just create the simple project so I will just say simple Java project. I will show you how to create the Maven project, but I will just create this simple Java project, right? So I'll just Selenium basic, right? And over here, the Java and all those things will become by default. Just click on next, right? And finish. So over here, you see, it says Selenium basic, right? Now, what you need to do, you need to configure, you need to add those char, the char files which you have downloaded, just right click. Just go to property, right? Go to Java build path, library. Just click on the add external jar, right? And I have already, you see, I have already exported those information. So I can add those Selenium Java. I just unzip and I can add to my project. That's it. Apply and <coughs> sure. Apply and close. Sorry guys. So this is how you can add the reference library, right? So this is the reference library you added over here. Now, what we can do, we can create our first Selenium class. Right, and I will just copy the code because we have the limited time. So we, need, we do not go with the write the code and all those things. So I will just take the copy of code, right? Launch, I will take the simple one. <coughs> okay, I will just add this code over here. Right? Now, it is not giving me any error, right? Let me just remove this one. And let me just add the URL. Add any URL, we just add https www.google.com. 
Facebook.com. So over here, guys, you can see the same same fundamental is following. We are setting up the system. Then we have the base URL. We are going to launch the base URL. Then we inspect the locators. We inspect the element, and then we perform the action. So the fundamental will remain the same, right? Always go for this approach. Always keep this this thing in mind. You are working on any tool or any application. These things you need to follow. Configure the system, launch the application, locate the element, perform the action. Then what you need to do? Verification and assertion, right? Then you can put your report to your management. Now we see why it is not going giving us any of this information, right? This information. So what you need to do? Guys, if you are missing any part, right, in this in this video presentation, I can see many questions are coming, right? Because we have almost 100 plus attendees now, right? So just be with me. I will share you this video afterward. So you can go through this video and you can get all the answer over there. How can we can download this information or something like that? OK, and I'm also going very slow for you guys so you can understand it very properly. So now we have this all information, but why? We have just I just copy this code. Now let me just do one thing. Let me just remove this reference library folder or just remove these files. These jar files and just click on the remove, right? And then apply. Then you see it is giving us error. The driver is giving us error and all those things. It's starting giving us error because we do not have the library added. So that's the reason we need to import. We need to go to property and we to add that selenium jar files then and then it this will work right then and then this will work you see now it will work so this is how you can configure the java library now what else we have downloaded we have downloaded you see the chrome driver.exe so this is how you need to configure the system property to launch that particular chrome driver this is common you should always follow this right keep the syntax with you and this is a three line you need to always write when you write your program, right? This is a different format. Now, guys, we can do one thing. We can do one thing. We can also now learn about the framework, right? Because many requests, this is for the beginner. Now for the uh, for the people who is has bit of knowledge. So let me just first show you the data driven framework, right? So what is a data driven framework, guys? In the simple terms, the any application, right? Or any automation script we are running with the different set of data right that is called the data driven framework where the data is driving all the our test cases right so let me just show you one simple example why i'm taking some simple example because whenever you learn something new right always go with the simple example it will help you to understand the concept right so over here i will just say okay data driven framework so now let's suppose we have one functionality, right? We have one functionality, login to application, right? We have one application, let's say any application, and I need to verify the login functionality, if it is working fine or not. So what are the manual steps I will do? I will first say launch the browser, right? The first step always we do launch the browser, Right? Because if you do the automation, you need to tell the browser which browser it should launch or not. Right? So always add this one step, launch the browser, then launch the base URL. Right? Then once you launch the base URL, one step always many guys missing in the interview because I also take the interview for many companies. Right? So that's the reason I normally ask this question. So when you work as a manual or automation tester right whenever you perform any action on any page you always verify that page and how you can verify that that page you can verify by title right so i will just say verify the login page yeah if you are on a login page then enter username and password right i will just give some information over here enter username and password then fifth steps click on submit button right and the six steps verify after login right on which page we are on to verify the dashboard page right so we verify the dashboard page 
so two things we need to verify if you are on the right page before login or and we are on the right page after login right so this is our normal steps we follow right and we write the selenium we write the automation script as well for these steps right now suppose i have the different set of data when i say data driven testing so let me just give you one example now i have one excel or one xml or i'm fetching the data directly from the database right so i have one uh, one set of data which define the different username and password right because we are going to test with the different scenario with the valid username and password and invalid username and password and all those things because we need to we need to do positive and negative testing as well right so what i will do i will first says i will pass both the value valid right i will just valid in username valid password then i will just says invalid username and valid password then i will says a uh, valid username and the four combination guys you already easily know what are the four combination for the username and password right so i am applying the those four combination and at the last i will just just boost invalid right so what i will get i will get the four different set of data right this is my test data this is my test data right i will get this different set of data so this is i will just says test data 1 test data 2 is data see i will store this information in excel in database or anywhere right guys so now if i run this framework right if i run this application as a framework right what it will do it will run this same functionality four time the first time it will take this information and store the information like the store the result then it will take this one and store the result then it will take this one and store the result and then it will take this one and store the result every time it will replace every time it will replace this information this two value username right and password every time it will replace these two things so this is the data driven framework you fetch the data from the different source right like the excel file the csv file even actual database like the data table or something like that and you apply those data information to the application right so now let me just open the eclipse and let me just show you from the scratch how you can do how you can do basic stuff like that way so how the mini project will be work like that way right so just from the from the scratch i'm just closing everything right i'm not going to write the code actually i'm just going to show you how the thing is work so i'm just going to create one demo project data driven box i will just say data driven box right and i'll just click next and finish right so over here we have the simple program right now i what i will do i will right click and just say one package right so i will just say test cases i will write my java code over here right i will just say login dot java login test right simple login test over here then i will create another package right i will just say package i will just say test data right over here what i will do i can add the excel file or anything right so let me just create one excel right let me just create one excel the one dummy excel i will create i will just create one dummy excel right the username password and key and key something like that i will just write down random value no need to say i have different set of data over here you see i have different set of data over here right and i will save this file and i will just save this file on the download test data right and now what i will do from the download from the download just from the download i am just copying this test data to this test data folder paste it over here right so this is the structure so now we are passing the test data value from this excel to this class right so this is how the data driven testing is work right simple way you write some code over here and you can access via apache pop pi the excel format right you can use the jdbc driver driver for database testing or fetching from the database right 
so this is how you can write your code over here right so that is called the data driven testing guys now let's we learn how we can do the keyword driven testing because these two framework normally use right so i'm just going to delete this one now let's we say keyword driven testing so what is keyword driven testing guys so keyword driven testing means keyword driven framework right which is based on the keywords of the application and how you can fetch those keyword so i will write the same code let me just take the same information over here i'm just okay so i have the same thing and i'll just replace this one guys because we will follow the same structure so you can easily understand so now we have the same steps and now we need to see the keyword or we can also do one thing we can also write the same steps in the excel right so what will be happen in the excel guys so i will just say step id step actual steps right so i will just say launch browser launch base url right or i will just say the direct to base url then what i will say is launch redirect right then i will just say verify the login page enter text in the username enter text in password click on login button and then verify the dashboard page if you are on the right page or not right this is my simple steps which we did in the database data driven testing as well 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 now you are a automation engineer you are you have the manual steps right now you need to define which framework you need to use and your team it says let, let's go with the keyword driven right so you steps you this is the steps you have right? so what you can do you need to identify the keywords you need to identify the keywords guys this is very important because once you identify the keyword right and mostly these things can be done by the experienced person once you identify the keywords then you write the method for each and every keywords so i will just say first keyword will be the i will just say launch launch browser this is my keyword right so if i need to launch any browser if i need to launch any browser right i can use this launch browser and provide the chrome firefox anything so i will just say launch browser then i will just says open url so any url in my application if i need to open any url i can use this method this keyword to open the url right or i will just say is redirect to url right any url then i will just verify the page so i will just say is verify page not the page which page i will just say is verify page it can be login page it can be dashboard page right then i will just say is enter or pass text pass text to the text box or any first name last name or it is a username or password anything i will just pass text right so over here it will become same pass text then it says click event right so i will just says click keyword it can be click on button it can be click on the link as well so for that i can use the click then again it says verify page right so these are the keyword i got these are the keyword i got from my steps right this is called a keyword driven framework right this is how you can design the keyword driven framework now what i need to do guys i need to create methods i need to create the methods for each and every keywords keywords i have right i need to create the method but i will do one thing i will just copy this one right and i will open again eclipse i will just say i will just close this one guys as of now i do not require you understand this things now i will just create the new project right java project and i will just say keyword driven box or keyword driven box and i will just click on it right so over here it says keyword driven from right now what i will do 
under the source i will create one project one package right you as you know i can say is data driven oh sorry i will just say is test data wherever you can uh, can put our excel right then i will just say is test cases for test cases i will just create one package right the test cases then i will create one more package for the utility one utility package where i can write my base class right i can just say base class which have the common common actions right launch the browser launch the application and all those things and i can also create one more class which is key word methods right over here i will i will create my all the common methods right so i will paste all those information over here right these are the methods i need to create so what i will do i will just start writing public void then i will i will create my first one launch browser right to launch the browser what i required i required string browser name this is how the big project work guys and i will write write code here how to launch means uh, driver.get right something like that public white then what we have the direct to url right so for that what are again we required string url right so i will write the code over here same then i will just say third things public void which verify the page right so for that what i required i will just say okay i required the page page title expected what should be the expected page title right i required expected page title as a part of parameter and then i will fetch the actual one using the driver dot get dot uh, get title driver dot get title i will fetch the actual one and i will compare and assert that simple then i have public just hold on let me just take this yeah now it is public void send or pass text so whenever i need to pass text right what i required i required web element element and string means text what actual text i need to pass if i get these two parameter right if i pass over here username and what text i need to pass then i will pass the password and what text i need to pass i can easily perform these steps then for the username and password so both the steps will cover in the one right we no need to write the two times for the username and password i can pass the username as well i can pass the password as well so this is how it is useful now i will just say public void click event or click action right so it should be the web element so what should be the web element i can perform the else. i will just say element dot click something like that right over here i i will say says element dot send key when we have the library configured we can use, use access this method and i will also pass the text this text right so this is create my complete keyword driven framework right no need to do this verify again because we already have this verify page so i will pass the dashboard page title and it will verify the dashboard page over here right so this is how once you once you fetch once you fetch the keyword right you create the method for them you create the method for them and once you create the method you can use this keyword method class across the application now if you are writing the 100 test cases right and whenever the click event going to become you just use that things you just use that things you can use those information right so this is keyword driven framework guys now what we are going to do we are going to see what is selenium grid guys right so selenium grid is a simple things it can do the same things as we do using the selenium web driver but for that we require to have a configuration for multiple environment so let's suppose if somebody ask you okay you need to run this particular same same applications on the different environment different operating system different browsers so you can configure the selenium grid on that and once you configure the selenium grid what it will work what is the framework what is the architecture of selenium grid let's suppose if you are working on any environment right if you have this one machine right 
and it's suppose you you are working on this particular one you write this code on the you have write this code of script test script, script right on one machine and now you want to run on all the machine to see if it is compatible with the linux or mac or something like that on the different browser right so what you do you normally create what you do you normally make this particular your uh, machine as a hub means this is a server right and you create the different nodes when i will just say nodes that means the client server client architecture the selenium grid work on the server client architecture so over here you have the different other machines similar like a your node but some different configuration right create like that way so over here you have the windows with chrome right you have the mac with safari and over here you have the linux without a browser right linux so now once you make once you utilize the selenium grid concept right you create the hub you create the nodes and you apply the same script the launch browser right so if you write the same code it will do at the same time on the three different browsers or, or sorry on the three different machines right so this is the concept you can use the selenium grid right so if somebody asks you how the selenium grid work so you can explain this concept hub and node it work on the client server architecture guys right the detailed code will be there let me just show you the detailed code over here if i think i have done in my last session right one of the last session okay so this should be the code this should be the simple code right you need to put the desired capability right what should be the desired capability means what should be the browser what should be the platform right then you see you need to pass the hub url over here then what is the base url again base url always come you pass the hub url you pass the base url and you just perform the same action guys you just load the uh, particular url and just validate the information right so this is how you can write the selenium grid code as well guys now the next things yeah the one challenge i face let me just show you whenever you write such code right you define all the information right but you need to make sure guys these two files the selenium server standalone which we, we you will download to use the selenium grid right this file and the chrome driver file always in the same folder right and you import this selenium server standalone file to your reference library you see only this no need to write uh, no need to import other selenium jar files guys only this is more than enough right this is you need to remember once you pass these things always make sure you also have this chrome driver exe in the same folder otherwise it will give you the error like you cannot create the chrome, uh, system is not able to create the another chrome session right because it won't able to find this chrome driver to perform the action right so always make sure this thing guys when you work with the selenium grid and this is the simple code over here okay now the next topic will be the test engine guys so this is one of the interesting topic right why we use the test engine because let me show you one of the things okay give you the example from this page so this is the simple my code with the main method right with the selenium the simple code i have written over here right to perform certain action and just make sure if you're on the right page or not and all those things right guys so this is my simple code which i'm going to use right now i need to see what should be the my output what should be the my output over here so i will right click and run this particular code as a java application you see java application and it will perform the action you just launch the browser perform the certain action right it will open the application and it will perform the certain action yeah it will do the certain action you see and it will close this dashboard and close the application now over here you see sorry uh, you can also ignore these comments this is not this is a comment you, there is one more i think just hold on let me just give you i recently applied that things what's that so
test engine. What you want the browser something like that. Yeah, you see, you can add this particular line. If you get this error message, right? Timeout receiving, you just add this line above this one. System property. That's it. You will not get this message. So you can see, guys, over here. Let me run this code again. So now the test case runs successfully, right? The test runs successfully, but the Selenium only give the output in the console. You do not have the proper reporting over here. You can only see the console output, right? So you cannot uh, copy that console output and send to your management, right? This is the test case has been passed. This is the print output and something like that. So that's the reason the test engines come into the picture because Selenium do not have the internal or the core mechanism right over here you see it says you are on the dashboard page that is correct but you cannot send this screenshot or this text to your manager as a reporting right because selenium do not have the inbuilt reporting structure so that's the reason you use the test engine now we use the test engine and test engine work on the different annotation right the test before after method before after class different annotated or uh, annotation right so this annotation over here, I just add this one annotation, right? And whenever you create the test ng class, right? No need to pass the main method. Always make sure test ng does not give the main method. It only give the test. So from over here, system will come to know which test case it need to run. But in the Java, we require the main method to tell the system where to start the code. And over here it says test. So start the code from over here. Now you see the same code, no change. I just add one line, test ng at the red test. And I will run this same code. And you see the previously the output was like this way. Now you see the output. I will run this one. And now it says test ng test, right? It will perform the certain action. It performed the same test case using the test engine now and close, right? So now you see the reporting. We can see the reporting over here. This looks more promising, right? How many test cases run, pass, failed, skipped. So over here, and also, if you see, this folder will get automatically created if you have test engine configured correctly. So if you go to this folder, you can see the index.html. Just go to property, just fetch the URL where it is this file, and just open in the browser. So you can send this report to your manager, you see? You can send this report to your manager, how many test cases pass, how many test cases failed. So this is looks more promising. So that's the main benefit. We use the test engine on the Selenium. There are other more benefit, but let me first show you how you can install the test engine, right? There is one URL available on the on the internet. You need to just go. I will I will paste that URL into this video comment. I will when I will send you the email, I will paste that URL. Just go to this new, right? And over here, this is the URL. You see? Mm. Okay. Yeah, this is a URL. So this URL, if you are not able to, if you do not have install, just click on add. Just go to test ng, right? And pass this URL and click on add, right? And again, guys, there are many things using the test ng you can do, right? You can configure to your project. Once you install, you need to configure for the project as well. So go to property, go to build path. Go to library and add library and add test ng guys for each and every project you need to add the test ng manually once you install in your eclipse then you need to add manually to your each and every project and you can see the test ng over here now guys over here in my blog you can see i have write everything about the test ng guys everything right how you can install how you can configure right there are many advanced topic as well Right. Using the test engine, you can prioritize your test case, which test case you need to run first, which test case you need to run second. Right. You can also do the grouping as well. You can create the group. Okay, smock test. So these are the smock test group. Right. You can also do the parallel mode. So you can run the two or three test cases parallelly. You can also run the same test case multiple times. You can use the invocation count. 
right? For that, so different keywords are used again using the uh, using the test engine. You can do the parameterization, right? You can use the parameterization over there as well. Then you can use the parameterization using the data provider. You can do the data driven testing, right? You can do the data driven testing as well guys so all those information all those information you can go to this blog guys you can find everything you see the listener if you want to exclude this is one of the famous interview questions how you can exclude the test case or the method from the test engine so there is a one options if you go to these topics you can see exclude and include you can see everything with the example with the code as well why i put the image file because i want you guys to not copy i want you guys to write this code in your eclipse right and the result how should be the result will look like what is the example of test ng xml one of the things if you need to say you need to create the test ng xml convert you just right click go to test ng and click on convert to test ng xml once you click on that it will give you the name and just click on the finish okay and it will create the test engine.xml. This is the heart of the test engine, right? And what with the parameter you need to make sure everything is described in the blog, guys. Right? So this is all about the test engine, how to install, how to configure, how to use. You need to go to this blog. I will put this blog link over here. Everything step by step is mentioned over here. Just read it and you will get all the ideas, right? Now, the Maven, guys. What is Maven? The Maven is the build automation tool, right? So what is build, guys? The build means you have you have something. You are your developer team is starting developing something, right? Then it, it is giving to the tester to test. That is called build, build to test, right? And once that build is successfully tested, right? It go to the it go to the production or test environment for further testing for UT testing or for the production for the end user, right? So for that to automate that process, we use the Maven, right? And why we use the Maven? Because Maven provides the centralized repository. What is centralized repository, guys? Let me tell you, right? So to configure Selenium, what we do, we download the jar files or Java jar files, right? If you work in advanced topics, you need to download the Apache OI for working in the Excel. Then you download the Cucumber, all the Cucumber jar files. Right? Then you need to download the test engine jar files. You need to download the JUnit jar files. Right? So for all of them, there are different websites, guys. There are different websites for all of them, right? But what Maven provide? Maven provide one centralized repository. Maven provide the one centralized repository where all these company, they list their application, they list their latest files on their website as well and also give to the Maven centralized repository, right? Maven centralized repository. So now Maven has the small bucket of jar files for the Selenium, Java, Java Apache, Cucumber, Test engine and J unit and many things, many other things, right? Many other things. Now, what it will be happen? What it will be happen? People like us will download, will have the computer, right? We have the computer, are working on the computer. So instead of going to the six website one by one and download the information, right? What they will prefer? What they will prefer? They will just make one simple hit to Maven. This is simple hit and it will download everything. It will download everything to their system. It will download everything to their system right? in the simple hit. And how you can do that? You need to define the dependency and Maven project, right? POM.xml. In the POM.xml, you just define the which dependency you required and you can download automatically. No need to do anything. You need to just make sure your internet is open. So this is the Maven centralized repo, right? And this is your, this will download to your local Maven repo. So this is why we use the Maven as a tester, 
right? If you're working as a DevOps, there is many use of Maven, but as a tester, you need to just make sure these things. It will make your our task easy, right? And let me just show you how you can create the Maven project. Just go to File, New, Other, and you can see the Maven. In the latest version of the Eclipse, now Maven is inbuilt. So you can see the Maven project over here. If you're not able to see this Maven, you just go to Help, Eclipse Marketplace, and download the Maven from there, right? You can just search for the Maven. You can download the Maven, or there are manual steps to download the Maven as well. Right? So you can download the Maven from there as well. Now, guys, I think we almost cover more than what time we have decided, right? But let me just share you the quick information because I have one more training session after that. So you can download the Maven from over here, right? And once you have Maven installed, right? What you can do, create the Maven project. So you can see M and J over here. You see M and J. Instead of Java project J, you can see M and J over here. And in the form.xml, you can define this dependency. You see? You can define the dependency, different dependency over here. Right? And where you can download this dependency, let's suppose. Let me just show you. You can go to Google, and if you just says, download selenium maven dependency you see it will launch to the maven repository right you can select the selenium java right you see the same folder the same which we have downloaded at the bottom the same thing will come over here we need to just copy this and paste it in the dependency section you see guys no need to download, unzip, and everything. Just paste it over here, save it. At the right side bottom, you see, it is downloading the Selenium jar files for this project automatically. So no need to go download manually from the website of the Selenium. You can directly add the dependency of Maven over here. Okay, so this is the main use of the Maven to reduce the manual workload for the tester, right? And it also maintain, maintain, maintain the version. Let's suppose, if you want to change the version, right? You just change the version over here and place control save. And it will again automatically change the latest, the whatever the version you have mentioned in the pom.xml, right? So this is how you can maintain the uh, maintain the versioning as well. Suppose if you are 10 developer working on the different things, right? And you, you don't know there is new version of the Selenium come and one of your colleague has downloaded the new version of the Selenium. Right? So it may be possible his code is not work on your machine or your mach your code is not work on that machine. So you need to make sure, guys, you need to make sure to use the Maven so you can control those type of conflict as well. Right. So end of the day, everyone has to put the latest version over here. Everybody will press control save. Right. So it will save the information. It will download the latest files, char files. It can be the, for the Cucumber as well. You see this Jenkins language. This is for the Cucumber the version. So everything you need to pass it over here, this cucumber and everything, right? And it will handle other things. It will download automatically, no need to do anything manually. So that is the main use of the Maven, right? So always remember if somebody asks you what is the Maven role in the automation tester, you can explain like that way. Now, one more topic will be the cucumber, right? So I think guys, uh, let's we do one thing for the cucumber API testing and the database testing i will try to create another session for you guys whenever i get this time right if you like this video if you like my this video you can do one thing you can just follow me on the different channels i am available right so you can see i am available on this my youtube video channel and you can also follow my blog right and i have the facebook page as well the slt learning so you can just follow over there because the three things remain the cucumber API and the database testing, right? So I will try to cover those quickly in half an hour in the next session. And I will again create the free session for you guys, right? So you can at least have brief how to start, how to stop, and what to do when you learn something new things, right? And you can also visit, you can also visit my blog, right? If you are new on the Selenium, you can visit my blog, right? And you can see over here, everything is there right everything is there right so you can click on this one selenium ide selenium web driver go to selenium ide structure you can see step by step what to do what not to do right then what you need to do guys 
I am supporting the community for free of cost, right? I do not want money from you guys, but I need your support. So I request you all guys just go to this page and just yeah, just click on this particular follow button, right? On the follower, I will give this link to the email, right? When I will send you this video link, I will upload this video on my YouTube channel as well, right? So just go and put your comment over there. It will be very helpful for me and it will motivate me to help you out, right? Perfect. So what you can guys do, you can just subscribe to my channel as well. This is my channel, right? So in the morning, it was around three, 300. And in, in the two days, I got the 70 new subscribers, right? So it will be good for me. So just subscribe my channel as well. You can see the many videos over here, guys, about the SQL, about the about the as how you can learn the SQL. Recently, I have done the many things, right? So the I'm just putting the new stuff in the new format and how to make your life easy. So just follow me over here. Just if you like my video, just click on the like, right? And follow me on this Facebook as well. This is my page, guys, SLT Learning. Right? I provide the training. This is my something I, I want in the COVID situation. I can utilize my time, right? So you can start learning from your side, right? And whenever you face any challenge, just get back to me on the, your different portal, right? I am on the, I am on the LinkedIn as well. Right. So you can go, you can catch me on the LinkedIn as well. This is my profile. I have the good experience in all those tools. I am training the people more than uh, I think six years now. I mostly I do the training on the US candidate because they require more training on the interview side to crack the interview and all those things. Right. And I also provide the project based training. So you can see on my screen, there are many big projects over there as well. So these are uh, the few of the project I can see. I, I was working with my one of the camp candidate, right? So you see, these are the big project, guys. Not this one, just hold on. Let me just show you. I do the PI testing and yeah, these are the few projects I, I've been working. So I can help you to understand what are the different structure as well. You see the different cucumbers and format for man folder and step definition and all those things right so there are many things we work on the mobile side as well i'm learning the mobile so i will upload the mobile tutorial as well so just follow my blog guys this is what i required in from you as a return put your valuable comment to me that will be definitely motivate me right and you can just follow the comment on the youtube i will upload this video for youtube and i will share the link with you i will also share the link of my blog as well guys so you can just refer the, this this blog. It is very step by step for everyone, right? So I can see many thank you messages over here, guys. So this this is really motivating for me, right? But I want you to just do the same thing on my different portal, right? So the thing is that you can easily understand how the thing is going to work, and this is really very helpful for me, right? I can see many thank comment over here. So just do the same thing on the different portal as well, okay? Thank you very much, guys, and I will I will do one thing. I will send you I will send you this recording, and I will try to get the more time for you guys to I, I can cover the rest of the topics. Okay, and if you miss any part, right? If you miss any part from this particular session, right? Just go to this video, learn from it. If you have any questions, help each other out. Now I am going to allow in that WhatsApp group as well. I'm going to allow you each and everyone to post their comment and all those things. It will be very useful for you guys. Learn from internally, right? Learn from each other challenge, post your questions. Somebody will help you out. Somebody will not help you out. So this is what I want from you guys, right? Thank you very much, guys, for spending your time in this COVID situation. Stay at home, stay safe, and we will definitely have the next session very soon. Okay? Thank you very much. Yeah.